Islamic countries are some of the most authoritarian regimes of our age. The rules are strict and their application harsh. Freedom of expression is uncommon. Apostasy is downright perilous. Imagine being an atheist living in a repressive Muslim country. Segregated from the rest of the world, you can't tell anyone that you're an apostate. You feel alone and in the dark. But with today's technology, you're no longer completely isolated. You can reach out to the free world and get news and information, but more importantly, you can get hope. Maryam Namazi, spokesperson for the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain, One Law for All and Iran Solidarity, wants to use the technology at her disposal to reach out within the borders of Iran. Her new TV show named Bread and Roses already started on the internet to illegally address free-thinking Iranians where they live. A few days ago, we interviewed her and got the scoop on this remarkable project. Questions about your your new show, Bread and Roses. So, what is Bread and Roses, and what are you trying to accomplish with this? Bread and Roses is a weekly television magazine on social and political issues, and it's just started recently. We've had four programs so far. The first one has been on nude protest as a form of resistance against Islam and um, the religious right, Islamism. The second one has been on the issue of Sharia law. The third on secularism and the the importance of the separation of religion from the state, and uh, as well as the the whole concept of secularism as a basic and fundamental right. And our last program has been on the question of apostasy with a focus on the execution sentence in Sudan of an apostate Maryam Yahya Ibrahim. So it's it's basically a free thinking, taboo breaking TV magazine uh, that deals with the issues that need to be discussed more in depth. Um, it, it's broadcast to Iran and the Middle East and North Africa via satellite TV, it's called New Channel Television. And basically in Iran, for example, nearly 70% of the population have these satellites, though they're illegal. And you do often see photographs of the Iranian regime using tanks in order to destroy all the satellite um, you know, dishes that they've managed to confiscate, but people just go out and get more because it is their way of connecting with the world and finding out information since all television in Iran is state controlled and it's um, obviously theocratic and, and religious in nature. So this magazine aims to bring, you know, a, a different, a, a human, a progressive, a secularist, a free thought sort of perspective on fundamental issues of our time but I think you know the program is not only useful for people living in Iran in the Middle East and North Africa it's also very useful for a lot of people here in the West you know given the fact that uh, I do deal with a lot of these issues on a day-to-day -day basis and there are uh, many issues that are not clear and um, uh, you know both because you've got a, a sort of racist and fascist far-right uh, trying to scapegoat Muslims and immigrants and you've got a pro-Islamist left trying to defend the f the religious right vis-a-vis -vis, you know free thinkers and dissenters uh, from from the region and and in general so I think it's a useful program for everybody really. Who is your target audience? Our audience are really free thinkers everywhere and I think there are many in numbers. I mean if you look at a place like Iran for example, very often you see a portrayal of um, you know Iran as a homogeneous Islamic society. It's no nowhere the case. In fact there's a huge modern secularist free thinking and atheist um, uh, you know, um, population, particularly because it's a very young population, 70% of people living there are under 30 years of age, and, and you find that in many countries in the Middle East and North Africa. So the, our audience are really free thinkers and, and dissenters in, in the region and, and also uh, across the globe. So there is actually a variety of audiences. 
then what languages do you target? Yeah, we have, for now, we have two programs every week. One is in English, uh, of course, uh, in order to reach audiences in the West, uh, but also, you know, English speakers in the Arab world and the Middle East and North Africa, and of course in Persian, uh, the, you know, um, for the Iranian audience. Um, but of course, if we're able to succeed and this program becomes a successful one, we hope to then have programs in Arabic, in Turkish, in Kurdish, and other languages that are relevant to, to the region. How many people do you think you could reach over the satellite broadcast? I think we, we are reaching millions of people via the satellite broadcast because, as I said, so many people have access to these satellite dishes and a lot of immigrants in the West also have access to the dishes. But of course, our programs are also available via the internet and social media. Um, I think the capacity of this program in order to um, highlight important issues to um, bring a focus to them to show the universality of you know fundamental things like secularism equality and freedom and also to create links between secularists and free thinkers across the globe is you know huge it's it, it, it has huge potential it's hugely important and you know what the reality is that the religious right, the Islamists, for example, very often work together across borders, and we need to do the same with, you know, the secularists, atheists, and free thinkers must do the same. And I think this program is something that will do that and that needs to be supported if it's going to be successful. What topics did you cover so far, and which ones do you plan to cover in the near future? The uh, topics that we discussed, uh, you know, w what's interesting about them is not only that we have a discussion on these issues, we, we invite viewers to upload videos and their comments, um, to ask us questions via Twitter or Facebook or via email, and we address all of those questions on, on air as well. And we, we do interviews with people. So, for example, on the question of new protest, we interviewed Alia Magda Mahdi, the Egyptian atheist blogger who posted a new photo of herself in protest against Islamism and misogyny in Egyptian society. And she was threatened as a result and had to flee the country. Uh, we also interviewed Amina Sabuyi, who's known as Amina Tyler. She was also a topless activist in Tunisia and again was imprisoned for her activism and was forced to flee. In the secularism um, uh, program, we interviewed philosopher A.C. Grayling about, you know, the importance of secularism and why he considers it a fundamental right. On the issue of apostasy, we've interviewed Nahla Mahmoud, who's the co-spokesperson of the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain and who herself has faced death threats as a result of leaving Islam and criticizing it. So, you know, um, it, it it is also introducing or um, getting um, across people who are obviously also well known, uh, but hearing from them as well in in-depth interviews about these issues. And you know, these are the things that we're going to continue doing. Uh, you know, one of our programs, upcoming programs, is going to be on the movement in Iran called Stealthy Freedoms, which are basically women in Iran posting photos of themselves on a Facebook page that has been liked now by over 300,000 people uh, posting unveiled photos of, our, of themselves and if you remember that in Iran the veil is compulsory it is punishable uh, by fines and even imprisonment if you're not properly veiled and you know thousands upon thousands of women are arrested every month for what's called improper veiling the very act of unveiling is a direct challenge to theocracy and an Islamic regime in Iran so that's one of the topics we'll be discussing um, as well as you know whether re, uh, you know morality without religion is possible well obviously it is but those are the things we'll be talking about and um, one of our upcoming 
uh, programs will be on freedom of expression, the importance and necessity of criticizing religion and being able to do that, how that's got nothing to do with racism, um, notwithstanding the fact that racism does exist, but criticizing beliefs and ideas are crucial. They're crucial for the progress of society and humankind, and particularly criticism of religion and Islam in this day and age um, is, is key. So, you know, from my perspective, we're living through an Islamic inquisition, and so criticizing its banner um, is hugely important. Showing solidarity with people who are on the front lines of battling it is another issue that's important. And what this program hopes to do is to raise these issues, but also create links, because after all, we are activists who want to bring about change. We're not, um, you know, sitting in judgment, having purely theoretical discussions. The issues that we're raising are matters of life and death for many people across the globe, and they're important ones that need to be spoken about and need to be tackled from a human perspective. You know, from our from our point of view, nothing is sacred, um, not religion, not not anything other than the human being, and and that's what this program hopes to promote and um, defend. How did you come up with the name Bread and Roses? Yeah, actually, Bread and Roses is the name of a poem about. Um, you know, um, a 1912 strike in Massachusetts, Lawrence, Massachusetts, of women workers, textile workers. And the placard that uh, I think uh, some of the women uh, strikers were carrying said bread and roses, that, you know, we want bread, but we want roses as well. And roses alludes to, you know, th the things that are, are nice and lovely and beautiful. And, and fun in our lives. And I think it's so apt when you're talking about particularly, you know, the, the Islamist movement, which is so brutal, so medieval, where it ta it's taken out every ounce of fun and happiness and love that, that's possible. I mean, even if you look at the, the news recently, you find, um, you know, the women who've posted their unveiled photos on Facebook being threatened with rape and, you know, a, a media outlet that's linked to the Islamic Revolutionary Guards has, one of their commentators has said basically that if a woman is going to be nude in public, which is what they consider unveiled women to be, then uh, the woman hasn't asked for permission to be unveiled by her male guardian and men will naturally be attracted to her and therefore it shouldn't be called rape if she's attacked. You've got six youngsters doing a video um, dancing in Iran with Farrell's Williams happy song. You know, it, it's been recreated in many countries across the Middle East and North Africa, and they've all they were all arrested. Of course, the six have been released on bail, but they'll go after them later for sure. So we have to keep vigilant. The director of the video is still in prison, and you've got you know a simple thing like. Um, uh, an actress in Khan kissing an octogenarian, uh, kissing him on the cheek, and uh, you know calls for her to be flogged because of that. So you know you're 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 faced with a movement that has no that that denies people basic rights to roses and fun and happiness. And so uh, the concept is using that idea of bread and roses, saying that people need you know things to live. Um, but they also need um, love and happiness and beauty in their lives. And, you know, the Islamic movement is so dark and bleak um, that this is a sort of challenge to it. What can people do to help out? Well, there's a lot people can do to help because the reality is that, you know, Islamists are rolling in money. They honestly are. And... Uh, you know, for for us dissenters and free thinkers, it's quite difficult to raise money. One, because we're considered to be controversial, um, you know, and um, we're dealing with issues that are taboo and that a lot of people don't want to touch or be associated with. Um, and it's because, you know, um, we we um, 
we are dealing with things that sometimes are, you know, seem to be threatening as well to the status quo. Um, so we need a lot of support. We're not getting government support. We're not getting support of big companies. The only support we've ever had are from individuals who agree with what we're doing and want to help in any way they can. Now, the thing with Bread and Roses is that we raised initially £4,000 and we were able to buy four cameras, four tripods and four really rubbish microphones with that money. And if you look at our first program on new protests, you'll see the sound quality, the lighting are, is horrendous. So we managed to borrow one light and we've bought microphones on credit card for a thousand pounds. But we're doing a fundraising campaign for 15,000 pounds to raise money for a video mixer and a computer to pay for the microphones and to get proper lighting as well. Now, what's happening right now is with our four cameras, because we don't have a video mixer, they're having to be edited together on a computer that keeps shutting down and it's taking days of work rather than, you know, being a matter of one or two hours if we had the video mixer. And so what we're hoping to do is raise money for this other crucial equipment we need so that it can be a long-term project because it's it's going to be difficult to carry on at this pace of work for just two half an hour programs in Persian and English, let alone try and do programs in Arabic and Turkish and, and so on. So we're asking for people to help us. We've got a Indiegogo campaign. We've got 20 days left from the 27th of May. Uh, we've managed to raise 2,000 so far, but we still need around, um, you know, um, 13,000 pounds more. I know it sounds like a lot of money, but when you think about the impact that this is going to have and the fact that none of us are getting paid for it, everyone is a volunteer on this project. So it's only for equipment and it's equipment that's going to last for, for very, very long. So hopefully if any of your viewers is interested, We'd love their support. Every amount can, any amount can help. Nothing is too small or, of course, too big. And we've got some perks on the site. So you'll see, um, you know, we'll, we'll give T-shirts and uh, posters. We also will allow you to have your say. So you can even choose themes of uh, the issues we're discussing um, to, you know, being taken out for lunch to an Iranian restaurant by us and so on and so forth. So have a look at our fundraising site and if you can help within the next 20 days, um, you know, we would really appreciate it. Miriam, thanks a lot for your time and I wish you success on your endeavors. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, we really appreciate the fact that you're highlighting our work and program and telling your viewers about it. I mean, the reality is that's how, um, you know, um, we, we have been able to reach people and we hope to reach a lot more with your help. Thank you. So this is it, Infidels. If you want to help out with this daring project, a link to the fundraising campaign is provided here and in the video description.